Welcome to the channel. My name is Erica Lucas. I'm a minimalist who discovered she loves gardening and is now not a minimalist about gardening. I have 87 fruit, vegetable, and herb plants here on my deck and I'm a succession planning, succession planning this year. So I have a couple more that are going to be popping up to tend to. I also have all the flowers that help um, pollinate and attract bees and butterflies and hummingbirds. I am going to take you on a tour of this garden at the end of the video. I am also going to put together, well my husband and my daughter are going to put together a new potting table for me and we're going to take a tour through Homestead Gardens which is a local garden center and I'm going to talk a lot about kitchen gardening and what I'm doing this year. I discovered how much I love gardening because I freed myself of stuff, of clutter, and figured out how to prioritize what matters to me most which is being with my family and taking care of my family. And this is one of the ways that I get to take care of my family. From seed to spoon, I get to grow and feed my family. I'm really glad you're spending time with me today, so let's get started. Now in my third year of gardening, I'm stepping up my gardening game with this teak potting bench my hubs is gonna put together. <laughs> Building a bench, will it help? Yeah. Yeah, great. In this house we're renting, I maintain a kitchen garden out on our deck. You can see part of it here straight ahead of those tomatoes and we're kind of looking over a seating area. I will take you on a tour of all of the plants that I keep in my kitchen garden. The idea and the mission of this year's kitchen garden is that I'm feeding my family, sharing with friends and neighbors, and learning a little bit more about how to can and launch from a kitchen garden into longer term food preservation. For me, a kitchen garden is real time. I walk out there, I harvest, and I use it in a meal. Um, so when I'm cooking with peppers, I go out to my deck and I cut off some peppers, I prune off some peppers and include them in uh, the meal. And so that's what a kitchen garden is for me. I started gardening in 2020 uh, at our old house. So this is the second time I'm gardening here in this house, my third year. And everything I'm doing is in containers. I would love to get some raised beds, uh, but we're, we're just not there. I'm just not there this year. That's not the mission this year. Um, I'm taking you to Homestead Gardens with me today. It is a local garden shop. I've never been. I'm in, I'm in the search of strawberries. I actually started growing strawberries from seeds myself, and they're doing pretty well, but strawberries typically do not bear fruit in the first year, and I would like to get something kind of spread out for a strawberry planting schedule. I would like something that is already bearing fruit that I can use in my garden, and then the ones I'm growing now maybe will bear strawberries in a year or two. Strawberries usually have a five-year life cycle. The plant of a strawberry usually goes for about five years. It can go longer. Um, it's usually about five years before it has crowned enough that it is actually just crowding itself and you can't really get fruit out of it. So I'm in search today at Homestead Gardens for any affordable companion flower plants and a strawberry plant. I am sorry for my voice in this video. I've been a little sick and had a bit of an asthma attack, so now my throat is always really scratchy for a couple of days. Anyway, we're here at this garden shop, and they had this is the indoor plants section. They actually have gift shop sections where individual vendors look like they're renting some space and selling their wares. And I, this place is humongous. We do end up uh, towards the back of the shop here. That's where I am making my way to the outdoor garden section to in search of strawberries and flowers for the garden outside. At the end of this video, I will take you on a tour of my garden and what it looks like, my kitchen garden. Uh, that's just what I call it. There's, you can call your garden anything you want. There's kitchen garden, which is, you know, something that was from decades or hundreds of years ago where people would just plant right in their front yard so they grew their own food. Um, sometimes it's called a potager, P-O-T-A-G-E-R, potager. A vegetable garden is another name. Um, a vegetable garden to me, in my mind, is something that you plant rows and rows of something in the ground where you actually, you know, maybe you're, you're yielding a lot more than you're planning on using. Um, you know, micro farming even if you're just a small um, house. I'm actually sharing this video because someone tagged me on Instagram and 
started her first garden this year and planted herself some food and it tagged me as the inspiration. And I was so moved and uplifted by that, that someone is feeding themselves based off something that I'm sharing here on YouTube and the way I'm doing something. So I just, I wanted to make sure that I continued to share this aspect of our lives and my hobby and how much I love gardening and that it's, it's such a rewarding experience. And if you haven't tried it, but you want to try it, I encourage you to do that. Getting food from seed to spoon yourself is so rewarding. Something that you grew, you cared for, you watered, you tended, you learned about, and then you get to include in a meal and feed your family is so amazing. And I love the experience. And I, I grow a little more each year. <laughs> well, I grow more food each year and I grow myself by learning more each year. I would love to read some comments on this video of what you do. Do you have a little kitchen windowsill that you grow some herbs? Do you plant like a kitchen garden on your backyard? Do you have a full vegetable garden? Do you have acreage? What do you have? Do you have nothing and you wish you could grow something or you have no interest in gardening whatsoever? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. I'm really interested in what everybody thinks about and plans for each year and tries to experiment with. This year I ordered dirt from this local garden center, the Homestead Gardens. I ordered 50% compost and 50% dirt, and it's what I have mounded in my backyard that I continue to fill pots from all year, well, all summer long and into the fall. Um, I'm doing succession planning this year, so I'm planting different times. Last year I planted everything in the beginning, so this year I'm kind of spreading out the planting schedule. And I'm also going to try to do some things in the fall. And then any dirt that's left over, like last year we had dirt left over, we just spread it out in the yard and in the flower beds around the house. And so we just make sure we use it all up. Another sort of branch, pun intended, that I'm learning this year is about companion planting. Uh, vegetables, fruits that can go together as well as flowers that go really well together and help pollinate the garden and help um, attract bees and butterflies and dahlias is one of those things and I did not have any dahlia seeds this year so I did pick up this dahlia for $12.99. We made it to the end. It's like a museum where you have to go all the way through the museum to get to the end, to the gift shop. <laughs> this is where I wanted to be, the outside. Um, and I'm just checking out the price of vegetables versus what I spent on seeds and looking for strawberries. So these tomatoes right here, $24.99. Here is a citrus plant for $40. I would love another lemon tree. I'm terrible at keeping citrus trees. I'm not sure. I bring them in the house over the winter and they die. I've done it three times. All three citrus plants have died. I have this one on strawberry. All right, $10. Buried treasure, haha. <laughs> Buried treasure. That's funny. It makes me laugh. It makes me want to buy you. Proven Winners is a good brand. So I'm, I'm going to go with this. It's an ever-bearing. So it's going to produce berries all summer instead of just June. It's got some new growth at the bottom. It's already got some flowers, so berries are imminent. Look, start one there. And then I can try to take some of the seeds and start a second plant from this. I will not buy a citrus tree. I will not buy a citrus tree. $90, no, I will not buy a citrus tree. I kill citrus trees. My lime tree is trying to come back to life, so I'm gonna give her a chance, but she sure as heck doesn't look like this. She's, you're a beauty. You, you're beautiful. A smaller one gallon, 35. I will not, I will not. This ended up being 12. The berry tone was eight. And then uh, the strawberry was 10. And they gave me like coupons to come back and get on different weeks. I got this from the farmer's market this morning. It's a quart of strawberries for $7. This at the at my grocery store right now would have been ten dollars, four ninety nine times two, because they only sell them in uh, pints. In the back of the garden is where we moved all of the dirt. We have fifty dirt, fifty percent dirt, fifty percent compost mixed here. 
that I keep filling bags in. Well, my eight-year-old keeps filling bags. I pay him $2 a bag. My potting table is awesome. I love that it's up now. I don't have to sit on the ground or try to bend over to do this every day. And I really do tend to the plants every single day in the garden. And um, this, I'm just potting up some peppers here. I'm putting a slow release fertilizer at the bottom of and mixing it in the dirt and then also adding some worm castings before I put the plant in. And then I mix a little dirt and compost back over it again and then a little bit of potting soil on top of that and stick it in the peppers section. Here are the peppers. I just potted up. They're jalapenos. These are also jalapenos. These are California wonders. Something is getting them. Caterpillar maybe. I haven't seen any caterpillars. White flies maybe. Hmm. This is Nostrium, I think. I call it Nostradamus. That's the flower. Anyway, great in the garden. Rebecca just planted all of these wildflower bins for us. Butterfly attractors, hummingbird attractors. Okay, then we have broccoli, broccoli, cantier beans, marigolds, carrots. These were just planted a couple of days ago, so they're not coming up yet. We have some evergreen trees that were gifted to us. And then my herb garden. There's the strawberry plant that I bought. I potted that up. These are the strawberries I planted from seeds from the grocery store. Um, they're coming in okay. So this is year one. This is probably a year two strawberry. I can see a strawberry. Basils that I need to pinch so that they keep growing. I'll come back. I can see a strawberry. Yeah. I Mm -hmm. Big strawberry. Then I have Kelway chamomile, German chamomile, and bee balm. Just a random succulent on its last legs. Nothing in here yet. Nothing in here yet. Down here I have jalapenos. Jalapenos. These are big gym peppers. That's a new style of pepper for me this year. Some marigolds. More peppers, it's not doing too well. That's a dead sunset. See, that's not doing very well. It's not growing at all. I'm gonna treat it with some fish emulsion, which is a water soluble fertilizer that I can try to give her some, some really good food and feeders. They, they're really big nitrogen feeders before they start flowering. So um, I'm gonna try to see if I can't get her going with some fish emulsion. Cubanelle peppers this one same thing got this one canary bells canary bell peppers and then that's my lime tree she's she's not happy that's my lemon tree also not happy those were gifted to me from my friend Katie when I brought it inside for the winter <laughs> I didn't do it right I guess some begonias there's some more begonias I need to get in and then over here, I have rosemary, tomatoes, and basil. Uh, tomatoes, rosemary, succulent. And this is just like our seating, a seating area here. And one over there. And then over here, I have, this is tomato jungle. Lots and lots of tomatoes. I'm planning on being able to can and make pizza sauce and pasta sauce and stuff this year. So lots of different kinds of tomatoes. Some blueberries. Blueberries do well when when um, grown together. So one is sacrificial. So you can see which one is going to be sacrificial. This one, <laughs> smaller. By sacrificing one, you make this one um, bear lots and lots of fruit. Blackberry plant I got from the farmer's market. There's my dahlia I bought with you guys. Oh, some onions that I just let chit, if that's the same thing as potatoes. Um, and then I just cut it in the kitchen and then put them in dirt. Let's see what happens. See if I grow more onions from one onion, two onions from one onion. And I also have on deck some potatoes that are inside in a paper bag that I am presently chitting for a couple of weeks, allowing it to 
make new potatoes when I put it in the ground. So that's my kitchen garden. And in about a month, I'll start harvesting. I've already taste tested some of the basil. The herbs, I could probably pull a few things off, but hopefully in a month, we will start feeding the family nearly every day from my kitchen garden.